Not too long ago, I sold a bunch of my Canon DSLR gear. I've been looking at moving over to the mirrors of the world, particularly the Sony's, because I think they're great cameras. So I managed to buy or pick up a second A7 III or camera body. Brilliant camera, it's it's fantastic for weddings. Um, it's pretty much or just about the perfect wedding camera, I think. Um, it's not too far off. There's a couple of little niggly things which I'll probably get into in this video. Um, but overall, it's an amazing camera. I absolutely love it. And if you're thinking about switching over to the Sony's for weddings, yeah, this is probably perhaps the, uh, the best camera to buy. But what I managed to do with some of the funds I raised, I picked up this bad boy. It's the Olympus, the OMD EM1 Mark II. So, uh, sorry, Olympus, please sort these names out. That's ridiculous. If I'm drunk, there was no way I'm going to be able to pronounce that name. I can barely say it sober. Anyway, today I want to do some sort of comparison between these two cameras. Now, it's not going to be an apples for apples kind of comparison because they are two very different cameras. This being a micro fill thirds, this being a full frame sensor. And if you don't know what the difference is, basically this is one fourth the size. The actual sensor, when you look at it in there, is one fourth the size of what the Sony is. So I can't really compare them directly because there is limitations on the micro four thirds, basically. And I know some of you are probably thinking right now, why compare these two cameras? The Sony is gonna absolutely obliterate the Olympus. Well, you might not want to be thinking that for too long um, because it gets a little bit muddy. Um, image wise, pure image quality wise, the Sony, it can't be beaten. It's the king. Don't even think about the Olympus if you're just looking at pure image quality. That's not fair um, because this is, it's got limitations. It's a micro four third sensor. Image quality wise, this is perhaps going to be similar to something like a 5D Mark III. It's very, very, very good, but it's not in line with the Sony. Okay, let's get the really boring bits out of the way first. I've got some notes just here below the camera, which you, I know you can't see at the moment, but I want to make sure I get things correct because I don't want to do, do my opinion on what camera's better. I want to make this more factual about what features, which camera has and which camera doesn't have it. Okay, the boring stuff. Okay, I already mentioned micro four thirds, full frame sensor. Uh, this one costs two thousand pounds here in the UK. The Olympus, fifteen hundred pounds. So five hundred pounds less for a micro four thirds. Now, that's that's quite expensive actually for a micro four thirds. Both of them have dual card slots. Both of them have a UHS two compatible card slot, so not both of them, only one of the card slots will have the UHS-2 compatible. Both of them have silent shooting. The Sony is 24 megapixels, the Olympus is 20 megapixels. They both shoot 4K video with a plethora of different video options. I'm not a videographer, so I'm not gonna go into the major details about the video options, but I, from what I understand, the Sony is better. It's got better frames per second or bit rates and all that kind of stuff or S log. Again, I'm not a videographer, so it's not fair for me to actually compare them on the video side. They both have in-body image stabilization. They both have some sort of tilting screen or articulating screen. So the Sony come out like this, which I think is really, really, really handy for me as a wedding photographer. So if I'm shooting up high or down low, that's fantastic. The Olympus, has one of these type screens, which I don't know, it's, it's a personal preference whether you like this particular screen or you don't. I personally like both because for weddings, this is fantastic, the Sony, but for video options, especially if you're doing some sort of selfie type video or just selfie photos or anything like that, the Olympus is gonna be better. Again, it's gonna be down to you which one you prefer over the other. Frames per second. The Sony does 10 frames a second, I believe, which is pretty damn fast. The Olympus smashes it at 18 frames a second. That's insane. Personally, for weddings, anything over five frames a second, for me personally, is a waste. I don't need it, so I'm never gonna use them at the high burst rate, but that's just me. Your needs are gonna differ. Autofocus on both of these cameras is fantastic. You've got 693 face detection points on the Sony going across, I think it's 93% of the cover of the sensor. 
The Olympus on the other hand is 121 autofocus points um, going across the majority of the sensor and that's spread out between the contrast and the phase detection as well. So from those kind of points, both the cameras are pretty good actually. They're both fantastic cameras. They are both capable of taking amazing pictures. Uh, the dynamic range on both of them is fantastic. I think so anyway, even the Olympus is pretty damn good. Let's look at what we get with each camera. The Sony, we obviously get a battery. It's a new type, it's the FZ100, which basically means it's a much better battery life. Um, you obviously get the camera body. Uh, you get a camera strap, which is kind of nice. I don't use them at all. And for charging, just wait there, you'll, you'll love this. We get this funky wire, which just literally kind of plugs into the camera and that's it. You don't actually get a charger with the Sony. You just get to have to plug it in. Um, it's kind of nice because if you want to travel light, you don't have to have a charger unit with you, but it would be nice to actually have the option to take the battery out and charge it elsewhere because if I'm shooting a wedding day and I want to charge up maybe a battery um, at some point in the day, I have to put the camera down and charge it in the camera. I, it's a it's a pain. So Sony do charge. I think it's about seventy quid for a separate charger, which I think is a a little bit of a rip off if you're asking me. But um, that's my personal opinion. I'm trying to keep this factual. But they do charge for a separate battery charger. That should really come in the case, if I'm perfectly honest. Not too happy about that, Sony. We should have a choice. But the Olympus, on the other hand, it's uh, like like the Sony. It's naturally got a battery. It's a pretty damn good battery. It's quite chunky as well. Um, it will last most of the day with video and shooting as well. So battery-wise on both the cameras, it's pretty damn good. Uh, you also get a camera strap. Again, I don't use camera straps, personally. I've got like other bits and pieces I use. We do get a charger. Thank you, Olympus. This is great. But we can't charge the actual battery in camera. So on one hand, the Sony is fantastic because you can charge a battery in camera, which you can't do on the Olympus. But with the Sony, you don't get a charger, but you do with the Olympus. So I wish we could charge the battery in the camera. That would be fantastic. But we don't have that option, unfortunately. But we do get a charger, so it's not all bad. The other thing we get with Olympus in the box is, is this. And I thought they were taking the piss out of us to start off with. I mean, what the hell is this? It's a tiny, tilty, swivel head uh, flash unit. And it looks like, it looks like a toy really that you get, I don't know, maybe in a McDonald's Happy Meal. And you're just thinking, what the hell is this gonna do? It's, it's, it's absolutely tiny. Uh, but it fits on there quite nicely. And you know what? It's actually quite good. I've used this, I'm not not even joking now, um, at bridal prep. Yes, I've used this camera at bridal prep, just, just for the odd picture. And it actually lights up a reasonable amount. Now, if you're in a big room, like with high ceilings, forget about it. This flash is not gonna be that good. It's gonna, it's just not worth it. But if you're in a small room, or you're trying to do detail shots, this is actually really, really good. And it's nice that Olympus have thought about something like this and just given it to us for, for nothing, right, basically. Um, so again, thank you, Olympus. Um, it's a nice little thing to have. Uh, especially if you're doing, uh, let's say you're doing, um, I don't know, a family gathering. Something like this, perfect. It's tiny, you can fit in your pocket uh, and you're good to go. It's it's nice little add-on. Now things get a little bit more fun because what I'm going to go into is the actual kind of capabilities of these cameras in terms of features that is and which features I think potentially are better on each camera. That's slightly subjective I know because my personal thoughts can be uh, a little bit biased you might say but I'm going to try and keep this as factual as possible. So we're going to start off with the Sony. It does have a number of features which are significantly better than the Olympus. For example, the EVF, it's it's night and day. This just, there's no comparison really. The EVF on the Sony is far better. It's far cleaner, it's faster, the refresh rate, um, or certainly feels that way. It's just superb, it's very, very clear. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's excellent, it's far, far, it's miles better than the Olympus. The Olympus doesn't even come close in that regards. The other thing I really like on this camera, 
over the Olympus, even though they can be slightly confusing when you first use the camera, is the actual menus. Um, they're not that bad. There is a number of things in there here that I have no idea what it is, and that's for photography bits. Um, but overall, the menus are way, way, way better than the Olympus. The Olympus is, I don't know, you need a PhD in menu or something like that to actually understand how to get around them. It took me about half an hour to actually find out how to format a memory card on the Olympus. I thought I went through absolutely every single option. It's really, really difficult. It's fine once you know where everything is, but if you don't, it's a pain. So yes, the Sony, yeah, much better menus, much better. It's far easier. They're not perfect, but they're definitely better. Another huge win for the Sony, and that's the customization of the camera. It's incredible. So basically, all of these kind of um, buttons, I can just put to whatever I want. So if I want a face and eye autofocus, I'll just put that on one button. But I can also customize that button a little bit further. So if I want that to be face and eye, eye autofocus for continuous focusing, I can set that. It's just really customizable and I've got it so I don't need to go into any menus anymore. I just hold down one button and it shifts between autofocus, uh, type, so single point and recompose, continuous, tracking, etc, etc. The customization on the Sony is so good, so, so, so good. Um, and you can just basically do everything that you want on the camera with just a button or two. Absolutely superb. Yeah, it's just, it's a game changer. It's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Speaking of autofocus, the continuous tracking on the Sony's is, it's superb. It's far better than the Olympus. The Olympus is still pretty damn good, but the Sony is way, way better. It's, it's something that is, again, a bit of a game changer. So you pretty much know if you, on target basically, you put your focus point over that couple as they're walking down the aisle, you're gonna nail pretty much every single picture. Perfect. The other thing is the face and the eye autofocus on the Sony. It is insanely good. It is, I keep using that phrase game changer, but for weddings, it's a game changer. It really, really is a game changer. It's, it's just, oh, I just love it. It's fantastic, it's just, oh, get in there Sony. Another fantastic thing on this Sony's is you can actually adapt lots of my old Canon mount glass. So the Sigma Art lenses or the Canon L lenses, I can use them all on the Sony and get pretty damn good autofocus as well using something like the Metabones adapter or the Sigma MC11 adapter. So yes, being able to use all of my Canon mount glass on the Sony body is absolutely superb. It means even though I haven't got that many um, native lenses from my Sony because I'm bringing across all of my Canon glass. I've got everything covered, every scenario that I might want. So if I want a super wide angle, I just pull up my 14 mil and I can use that straight on here. If I want my 70 to 200, my Canon L glass, I can put it on here and I'm still getting good autofocus, basically. And yeah, there's not much more you can say about that. I can just bring my Canon glass onto this. Brilliant. That kind of wraps up where the Sony is massively ahead. In terms of actual shooting features on the camera, there isn't much more to say. You do have things like exposure bracketing. So for landscapes, so you're gonna underexpose one picture, take one picture, say uh, zero exposure, and then overexpose one, then you just blend them all together uh, for a high dynamic range picture. Brilliant, most cameras will have this. And again, this has it. But in terms of other features for shooting, there isn't much on here, to be honest. You can take photos, you can do some video, and you can do the exposure bracketing. And that's about your limit, guys. It's a little bit disappointing. Um, yeah. Let's look at the Olympus on the other hand. Arguably one of the better points on the Olympus is the flip out screen. It does depend on your personal preference and your needs as a uh, photographer or videographer. If you're purely just a photographer, you probably don't need that swivel bit. Um, but if you're like a dual shooter, so you shoot video and photos, having something like that is arguably better. Um, the other thing on this, which is definitely better than the Sony, is you can touch the screen. It's great. The Sony does have a touch screen, yes. 
but if you've watched any of my videos, you know what I think of it. It's garbage. Sony, they could sort this out. They just need to update some firmware, and I won't be able to slag them off anymore. On the other hand, the Olympus, it does have a touchscreen. It's not perfect. I'm not saying it's perfect. You can't go through any of the menus on the touchscreen. You can touch the focus, and it will actually focus and take the picture when you tap the screen, which is really, really nice. Um, you can actually fl flick through pictures as well. You can just do that, and it flicks through all the pictures, which is brilliant again. Um, so, yeah, the touchscreen, while not perfect on this camera, is certainly a lot better than the Sony's. Sony's do one. It's garbage. The first thing I noticed before I actually bought this camera, I went into the shop and I picked one up and I just went, oh my god, and that's the grip. It's, guys, if you've never, ever, ever picked up one of these, the only way I can kind of describe it, it's like, it's like your camera is trying to make love to your hand. It's just like, ooh, that feels good, baby. That's, it's just... It's the best feeling camera grip I have ever used in my entire life. Every person, and I mean every person without fail that I've shown this camera to, when they've picked up and gone, oh my God, that is good. The Sony, don't get me wrong, it's a nice grip. It's It feels quite nice and chunky. But this, wow, that feels, that's how a grip should be. That, go to a shop, I promise you, go to a shop, Pick up this camera, the EM1 Mark II, and feel that gripping. You tell me that it's not a better grip. Honestly, it's 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 so much nicer. It just, it just feels really good. The camera body does feel rugged. They both do, to be fair. But the grip on this is so much nicer. A huge win for this camera is the in-body image stabilization. I mean, this is a huge win. It's not even Sony's not even on the same ballpark with this. The image stabilization in this camera is crazy good. Um, no look, word of a lie, you can take handheld shots for up to two to three seconds with this. And I'm just talking just, just like that. If you've got pretty stable hands, or if you're leaning up against something pretty stable, you might even be able to go longer, and they come out crisp and sharp. You cannot do that on the Sony. You can go down to maybe a tenth of a second on the Sony. I don't know, I don't really test it out, but that's about my limit personally. Your mileage is gonna vary on that because you might be a much more stable person. But honestly, the image stabilization in this is incredible, especially for video. If you're doing, like, like, like I say, video, and you're walking around with this particular camera, it's like walking around with a gimbal on it. It's incredible. It's so smooth and cinematic. Um, again, it's not always perfect. You might get the occasional jump. I don't know if you're jumping off something like 10 feet high, you might get a little wobble. But otherwise, the image stabilization in the Olympus, it just destroys the Sony. Obviously, that's down to the sensor size on the Olympus. Being a micro four thirds, they're always known for having better in body stabilization, basically. It doesn't mean that the, the Sony is terrible. It's, it's still pretty damn good. But like I say, because this is a micro four third sensor, the stabilization just, it's just better. It's just better. Some counts with the Olympus, and that's a single point autofocus. So not the continuous focusing, just a single point. So Focus straight in and it holds it. That is insanely fast on the Olympus. I mean, incredibly fast. I have i don't think I've ever had a camera that is as fast to focus as this one. It's, it's pretty much instantaneous. Maybe the kit lens on the A6000 is as quick. Um, I don't know. Is it almost impossible for me to actually measure it? It's so, so fast. The Sony is pretty damn good. It's not quite up to a DSLR standard. This is way past a DSLR. Um, it's instant. Now it will vary depending on the actual lenses that you use. There's no getting around that. So the Sony, for instance, um, the 55 Zeiss, it's not as quick as the 85 1.8 on the Sony. So it does vary ever so slightly on this particular camera. This camera is instant. It's incredibly fast. Um, and I just really think that's worth noting. If you're trying to get a picture of something that's fast moving and you've got a microsecond to actually get the shot, the Olympus is gonna nail it. The Sony in continuous autofocus is potentially as fast as the Olympus. I will say that. the I, I don't know what Sony have done on the 
um, no autofocus on this but because the continuous autofocus on the Sony is incredibly fast and accurate the single point just isn't quite as good I don't know what they've done but again Sony most likely can come out with some sort of firmware and fix this and there will be no issues but for the time being the single point on the Olympus wins. Something else the Olympus is fantastic at and it's well known for and there's a lot of videos actually online uh, showing basically exactly what I'm going to say and that's the weather ceiling on this camera. It's well known to be able to shoot in sub temperatures. Yes the Sony can also do this but there is also videos out there with the Olympus basically being frozen. You can't move any of the dials, you can't push any of the buttons or anything. And they just wait for it to defrost, basically, and it works perfectly. I'm not so sure I trust the Sony to do that. It might be able to, but the weather ceiling on the Olympus is a winner, guys. If you're somebody that shoots in really harsh conditions, Definitely consider the Olympus. It will basically. I've seen. I've seen. Literally seen. I can't remember who it was. I think it was somebody called Blunty. Uh, I could be wrong on that. He basically just put the, the camera with a lens on into a dish of water about halfway up, and was still taking photos with it using autofocus and everything else. I might be able to just put this out in a little bit of rain. The Sony. I. I wouldn't want to trust it any further. To be honest, the Olympus definitely weather sealing is. It's a it's, a, it's really good actually, yeah I like that. So before I get into the actual shooting features of the Olympus because there are quite a lot, another thing to consider is the actual lenses and that's the price of the lenses more specifically. The Sony, we all know by now, if you go for the G Master lenses, you might as well just remortgage your house. Um, they're crazy expensive and Yes, there is now third-party lenses start to come out. Tamron is starting to make lenses. Obviously, Sigma's bringing out some. That's a whole new video. Um, but yeah, the Sony lenses, basically, or Sony mount lenses, they're way more expensive. If you buy the Micro Four Thirds lenses, now there is some significant differences. Obviously, um, you know they're designed for a full first camera they're much easier to make um, you have to double the obviously the focal range and the aperture etc etc um, so there is limitations and you can't directly compare the lens between a full frame and a micro four thirds but know this if you're buying a micro four third system the lenses are way cheaper the pro grade lenses from Olympus are quite costly about a thousand pounds but you can still buy some cheaper alternatives which are significantly cheaper and I'm talking 250 to 500 quid cheaper um, or that kind of price range sorry so yeah the lenses on the Micro Four Thirds are definitely cheaper but again it's not really fair to compare full frame lenses to Micro Four Thirds just know that if you're buying into this ecosystem they are cheaper okay let's continue because the Olympus this bad boy it's not finished yet, not even by quite a long shot. It's It's got quite a few more tricks up its sleeve. So, what are these tricks? Well, we're gonna talk about more than about the shooting modes now because the Olympus has quite a lot to go in for it. How about something called live composite mode? This is, I didn't even realize this was on the camera to be honest when I first bought this. Uh, but basically what you do, you go to bulb mode, which is on most cameras, uh, which basically you can just build the image in camera. But this goes one step further because what you can actually do, you set the exposure in camera and you just kind of leave it. And what the camera will do then, it will just record any extra light that comes in or any movement of light. So ideal for things like star trails, let's say, or you're trying to record the light movement on cars as they go past on the highway or all those kind of pictures. Super brilliant. Um, and I did, like I said, I didn't even realize this was in the camera. So for me personally, the way I would use this is if I was using something like a pixel stick. Um, it makes it so much easier because I can just set the shot up, bring the pixel stick in and I'm do, done in maybe a couple pictures and that's that's perfect for me. Um, and I think a lot of people potentially will like that feature. Again, whether you use it, that's down to you. But, you know, it's there. How about high-res shots? Um, what basically the Olympus is able to do is take a bunch of pictures um, all at once and combine them into one huge file. So I think it's 80 megapixels on the Olympus, which is absolutely mammoth. Um, and what it's doing is basically shifting the sensor or the pixels, one pixel across each time when it's taking the picture. 
There is limitations with this, even though it's a much bigger file, if there's any movement at all in your picture, so let's say leaves blowing in a tree off in the distance, they are just going to look basically like garbage, it's just not going to work. So for landscape pictures and stuff like that, it might not be ideal. Uh, but if you're using, I don't know, or shooting even in studio type of conditions for product photography, that can be pretty damn useful. You're going to get really high resolution pictures. Um, the quality of that pictures is down to you. It could be down to your lighting, etc. But again, it's there. It's an option. A super cool thing on the Olympus is something called Pro Capture. Wow, what a thing. Um, Basically what the camera will do is it will buffer a set number of images. I think you can say it from 10, 15, 20 or whatever it is. Um, let's say 15. And it will buffer 14 pictures. I'm going to get to the 15th. It will buffer 14 pictures and it keep going, 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 going until you take the 15th shot. And that's its cutoff point. But it will basically keep all the 14 images beforehand as a backup almost. Like, um, imagine if your finger, your trigger finger, isn't fast enough on the action, you've got that one shot to get the picture. Basically, you're just buffering, 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 take the picture, but your picture, the last one, is the one where the bird's flown off and you've missed it. But the 13th picture, or the 10th picture in the buffer, was the perfect picture. Well, now, you've got that shot. You don't have to worry about it. The Sony doesn't have this feature. Not at all. Actually, none of these features I'm saying now that Sony has got. So, yeah, to take that for what it is. A really weird kind of feature on this camera at first, and your mileage is going to really vary whether you see this as useful or not. Personally, perhaps not that useful. It's probably a feature I will never ever use, and it's something called Keystone. Now, I don't know if that's copyrighted to Olympus or it's open across the actual whole photography industry. I don't know, but it's something called Keystone on this camera. And what it basically does, it changes the perspective of a said image. You know when you use tilt shift, you're basically using it because you're looking up at a building and it looks like it's falling over backwards. Well, what Keystone will do is basically bring it more in line to how it should look. So basically straighten it up. Uh, it's a really kind of cool feature. There is limitations on this because obviously when you use this, you're lowering the resolution of the actual image because it's basically just tilting it back up. Some of the things you can do in Photoshop or Lightroom, you can actually do them. It's a pretty cool feature. Whether you use this or not is down to you. Like I said, I'll probably never ever use this, uh, but it's there, it's an option, it's, which is pretty cool. Something else I've said about the Sony's is the multiple exposure. It doesn't have it. Now please understand, multiple exposure is not exposure bracketing. They are two very separate things. Please don't get them confused. They're, they're just totally different. Multiple exposure, if you remember back in the film days, if you're old enough or maybe you've seen it, but basically multiple exposure, you take a picture and you forget to roll on the wind, or wind on the roll of film basically, and then you take another picture and it just overlays the image on top and you get that really weird kind of like picture effect. And if used correctly, it can create some really striking images. And a lot of wedding photographers will actually use this just so they can stand out. You know, they wanna make sure their images stand out against somebody else's. Sony doesn't have this. It does have exposure bracketing, but again, exposure bracketing is not multiple exposure. I'm not going to say the Olympus does the best multiple exposures ever. It's quite limited in its options, um, which is a little bit of a shame. The Canons, I think, has got the best options that I've personally used. I've not used Nikon, so I can't say, but the Canons are a little bit better. The Olympus does have a multiple exposure feature on there. It's not amazing, but it's there. The Sony doesn't have it, it's not in sight. I don't know, maybe Sony can bring it to us. If you're somebody that's using your camera for, I don't know, YouTube videos or something like that, or you're a videographer and you like the look of the Sony's because of the size and weight, etc., etc., something that you're gonna use quite often is time-lapse. Again, Sony, it's not on there at all. Sorry, guys. Now, you can just shoot a bunch of video, compress it down on your timeline, and it will look very similar to time-lapse but that's not a time-lapse feature. A time-lapse feature basically is where you set the camera up on a tripod and it takes a bunch of images over a period of time. So whether that's three seconds, five seconds, however long you want. And you get a really kind of cool effect. And that's the professional way of doing it or the best way of doing it because you've got direct kind of um, control over your images. And 
yeah, it's just the best way of doing it. Plus, if you're shooting, let's say, video over a five hour kind of period, which you can do with time lapse, can you imagine the size of the files? That's why you shoot it. Basically, images over a period of time, you're gonna get a lot smaller files, basically. And that's why time lapse is preferred. At least it is for me, when I get around to it, which isn't that often. How do you like the sound of 60 frames or 60 raw images per second. That sounds pretty mental, doesn't it? Um, well, the, again, this, the Olympus, it, it can do that. Uh, granted, there's no autofocus with this, so you basically lock your, exp um, your focus point, and that's it, you can't move it then. You take the pictures and you're done, you can't focus, you can't do anything like that. You set it beforehand. So if you're a sports photographer, let's say, for example, and you want to lock your um, focus point where the goal is. So you want to get the ball as it goes across the line. Well, you just shoot 60 frames in that single second. Guarantee one of them's going to come out. Um, it's a very similar kind of feature to the Pro Capture. I think I prefer the Pro Capture, if I'm perfectly honest. I don't need 60 frames of a single thing. That's insane. But it's an option, you know. If you have one shot and it's a very quick motion, then that could be really, really useful. It's it's up to you and again your mileage on whether you want these features or not. Um, it's not something I'm potentially going to ever use, but the options are there and that's the most important thing. If we don't have the options, we can't use those features. Sony, unfortunately, again, for whatever reason, they don't have these features or a lot of these features. They could have them. They could bring out a firmware update and they could have these options put into the camera, but that's down to Sony. Anyway guys, I'm about done with this video. I think I've gone on long enough about the different features of both cameras. Um, I just want to say though, that again, you can't really directly compare these two cameras. They're different tools. They are designed for very different jobs. Uh, the Sony is going to be my absolute go-to for wedding photography for the face and the eye autofocus. It's a much better tool for the job. Remember, cameras are only ever the tool. You know, you control the tool. So yeah, the Sony is a much better tool for weddings. Um, for a lot of the other stuff though that I do, personal kind of stuff like families, days out, anything like that, or if I want to shoot events uh, like with high speed kind of things going on, like say, I don't know if I go to a football match or if I go to a, a muddy run or something like that, I'm going to take this. I've got to buy some more lenses yet, but I'm going to take this because the wave, wave of the ceiling, the frames per second, etc, etc, it gives me more options. Um, it's a brilliant tool. Uh, but whatever you shoot, you've got to decide which one is going to be better for you personally. I can't tell you that because our needs are going to be very different. But just know both cameras are superb, um, but they just have different feature sets. And that's what I really want to highlight in this particular video. Are you thinking about picking up one of these cameras? If you are, let me know and I'll you know, maybe ask me a question about one of them. I'll give you my honest opinion about whether I think that might work in that scenario or not. Again, it's your choice which camera you want to buy, but I will help you out as much as I can. So yeah, just drop me a comment, maybe leave me a like or something like that. You, you know how this YouTube stuff works. And if you want to see more videos, subscribe, and I will, yeah, I'll see you next time, guess.